The regular so everyone means one who takes to Krishna consciousness. Everyone does not mean that one who does not. But if one takes to Krishna consciousness, by his influence hundreds will be happy. Hundreds will be happy. So if you people, if they become Krishna conscious, uh, then there will be tremendous benefit to the human society. Uh, not that everyone will become Krishna conscious. By the presence of really pure Krishna conscious person, many uh, people will be benefit. In the Narada Pancharatra, the regulative principles of devotional service are described as follows. Any activities sanctioned in the revealed scriptures and aiming at satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are accepted by saintly teachers as the regulative principles of devotional service. This is the primary point. Whatever Lokiki and Vaidiki. Vaidiki means according to the scriptures. A lokuki means ordinary common activities. Both of them, when they are executed for satisfaction of Krishna, uh, it is immediately uh, transcendent. If somebody regularly executes such service under the Supreme Personality of Godhead, under the direction of a bona fide spiritual master, then gradually he rises to the platform of serving in pure love of God. Chapter 3 Eligibility of the Candidate for Accepting Devotional Service On account of his association with Mahatmas, or great souls, 100% in the devotional service of the Lord, one may attain a little bit of attraction for Sri Krishna. But at the same time, one may remain very much attached to fruitive activities and material sense enjoyments and not be prepared to undergo the different types of renunciation. Such a person, if he has unflinching attraction to Krishna, becomes an eligible candidate for discharging devotional service. This attraction for Krishna consciousness in association with pure devotees is the sign of great fortune. It is confirmed by Lord Chaitanya that only the fortunate persons by the mercy of both the bona fide spiritual master and Krishna will get the seed of devotional service. In this connection, Lord Krishna says in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, 20th chapter, verse 8, My dear Uddhava, only by exceptional fortune does someone become attracted to me, Krishna. And even if one is not completely detached from fruitive activities, or is not completely attached to devotional service, such service is quickly effective. Devotees can be divided into three classes. The first or uppermost class is described as follows. One is very expert in the study of relevant scriptures, and he is also expert in putting forward arguments in terms of those scriptures. He can very nicely present conclusions with perfect discretion, and can consider the ways of devotional These service. are the symptoms of topmost devotee. He has got full knowledge in scripture. He can argue on the basis of scripture. He can convince the other party. These are the symptoms of Uttama Dikari. He understands perfectly that the ultimate goal of life is to attain to the transcendental loving service of Krishna. And he knows that Krishna is the only object of worship and love. This first class devotee is one who has strictly followed the rules and regulations under the training of a bona fide spiritual master and has sincerely obeyed him in accord with revealed scriptures. Thus being fully trained to preach and become a spiritual master himself, he is considered first class. A first class devotee never deviates from the principles of higher authority and he attains firm faith in the scriptures by understanding with all reasons and arguments. When we speak of arguments and reason, it means arguments and reason on the basis of revealed scripture. The first class devotee is not interested in dry speculative methods meant for wasting time. In other words, one who has attained a mature determination in the matter of devotional service can be accepted as the first class devotee. The second class devotee has been defined by the following symptoms. He is not very expert in arguing on the strength of revealed scripture, but he has firm faith in the objective. The purport of this description 
is that the second class devotee has firm faith in the procedure of devotional service under Krishna, but he may sometimes fail to offer arguments and decisions on the strength of revealed scripture to an opposing party, but at the same time he is still undaunted within himself as to his decision that Krishna is the supreme object of worship. The neophyte or third class devotee is one whose faith is not strong and at the same time does not recognize the decision of the revealed scripture. The neophyte's faith can be changed by someone else with strong arguments or by an opposite decision. Unlike the second class devotee, who also cannot put forward arguments and evidences from the scripture, but who has still has all faith in the objective, the neophyte has no firm faith in the objective. Thus he is called the neophyte devotee. Further classification of the neophyte devotee is made in the Bhagavad Gita. It is stated there that four classes of men, namely those who are distressed, those who are in need of money, those who are inquisitive, and those who are wise, begin devotional service and come to the Lord for relief in the matter of their respective self-satisfaction. They go into some place of worship and pray to God for mitigation of material distress or for some economic development or to satisfy their inquisitiveness. And a wise man who simply realizes the greatness of God is also counted amongst the neophytes. Such beginners can be elevated to the second class or first class platform if they associate with pure devotees. An example of the neophyte class is Maharaj Dhruva. He was in need of his father's kingdom and therefore engaged himself in devotional service to the Lord. Then in the end, when he was completely purified, he declined to accept any material benediction from the Lord. Similarly, Gajendra was also distressed and prayed to Krishna for protection, after which he became a pure devotee. Similarly, Sanaka, Sanatana, Sananda and Sanat Kumara were all in the category of wise, saintly persons and they were also attracted by devotional service. A similar thing happened to the assemblage in the Nama Ranya forest headed by the sage Sonaka. They were inquisitive and were always asking Sutta Goswami about Krishna. Thus they achieved the association of a pure devotee and became pure devotees themselves. So that is the way of elevating oneself. In whatever condition one may be, if he is fortunate enough to associate with pure devotees, then very quickly he is elevated to the second class or first class platform. These four types of devotees have been described in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and they have all been accepted as pious. Without becoming pious, no one can come to devotional service. It is explained in the Bhagavad Gita that only one who has continually executed pious activities and whose sinful reactions in life have completely stopped can take to Krishna consciousness. Others cannot. The neophyte devotees are classified into four groups. The distressed, those who are in need of money, the inquisitive, and the wise, according to their gradations of pious activities. Without pious activities, if a man is in a distressed condition, he becomes an agnostic, communist or something like that. Because he does not firmly believe in God, he thinks that he can adjust his distressed condition by totally disbelieving in Him. Lord Krishna, however, has explained in the Gita that out of these four types of neophytes, the one who is wise is very dear to Him, because a wise man, if he is attached to Krishna, is not seeking an exchange of material benefits. A wise man who becomes attached to Krishna does not want any return from him, neither in the form of relieving distress nor in gaining money. This means that from the very beginning, the basic principle of attachment to Krishna is more or less love. Furthermore, due to his wisdom and study of Shastra and scripture, he can understand also that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Tamak, in India there are many persons whose Tamak is already filled up, but he is not standing. Hare Krishna. That is not a condition. That because his Tamak is filled up, therefore one will chant Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ohi Tukiya Pratiyata, chanting of Hare Krishna mantra, 
is not caused by anything. Ahitapratihata, it cannot be checked by any condition. Your chanting of Hare Krishna mantra cannot be checked because one is poor. No. That is not required. Any condition one can chant it. Now, a poor man is suffering without chanting Hare Krishna. So what is the harm if he chants Hare Krishna? There are many poor men. They are not chanting Hare Krishna. They are suffering. But in that condition, if they are induced to chant Hare Krishna, what is the harm if there is some benefit? 